Hello everyone. In this session, we will start I/O organization. How a computer system is going to manage and deal with the peripheral devices. You know that the peripheral devices are essential devices by using which either a user or a programmer will be able to communicate with the computer system. If you remember, we have already designed a CPU, and we also understood the basic details of the main memory in which the actual programs are going to be stored. As a whole, collectively, CPU and the main memory will be able to execute the programs. That is the only purpose of the CPU, or a computer system is going to serve for. The purpose of the very purpose of the computer system rather is simply executing the programs. You know that everything that we do within a computer system is nothing but the execution of a program now in order to execute the programs we do require a main memory and a cpu cpu execute the program main memory is going to store the programs in the main memory you know that there are two essential parts one is instruction part and one more is data part in the instruction part the instructions of the programs will get stored in the data part operands of each and every instruction will get stored so collectively will be accessed by the cpu and finally cpu will be able to execute the instruction by instruction thereby the program will get executed fine this mechanism we already have gone through now let us understand how the user will be able to communicate with the computer system you know that the cpu is going to execute the programs but how a user will be able to load the programs within the computer system in order to load the program within a computer system we require some communication medium through which we will be able to communicate with the computer system and thereby the programs will get loaded within the main memory so we use peripheral devices the peripheral device any peripheral device you use acts as a medium in between cpu and uh, the user through which a communication will get established name any peripheral device every peripheral device initially you need to understand that is based on a data format which is called ascii format here the biggest problem for a user or a designer is peripheral devices works on ascii format and the cpu always works on some binary formats but not ascii formats so a user will be able to communicate with the computer system only through ascii format but the cpu cannot understand ascii format so here when we try to establish a communication medium between the peripheral devices and the cpu this is the major hurdle that we need to come across the data formats that are used by the peripheral devices are different from the data formats that are used within the computer system this is the major hurdle so this hazard has to be dealt with very carefully so that a proper communication channel will get established through which user will be able to load the programs relentlessly and efficiently now let us understand how we are going to establish a communication medium in between peripheral devices and the cp there are some input devices and output devices are listed here some devices you are already familiar with but some devices you haven't seen there is something called a magnetic strip reader i don't know whether you are completely aware of it or not and there is something called tape drive and uh, you know tape recorder nowadays we are not using those tape recorders or tape drives because all the time nowadays we are just using the optical devices such as dvds and cds okay so here these are uh, the list of input devices through which the input can be given to the computer system and these are the list of the output devices through which the computer will be able to give the output to the user of course there is something called crt cathode ray tube monitor we are not using the crt anymore now we are using lcd or you know some advanced uh, screens but not crt now there is a I mean, even the printers also pretty much advanced we are not using dat dot matrix we are using only just laser printers in which there won't be any impact at all 
So then uh, there's a plotter, analog voice, and these things we are not using at all. Okay, fine. Anyhow, these are the input devices and these are the output devices through which we'll be able to communicate with the computer system. But now, fine, we can see all these devices somewhere or the other. But our main intention and main goal is to establish a proper communication channel in between the peripheral devices and the CPU. Let us see. In order to communicate with the computer system as we use a peripheral device, all these peripheral devices require something called an interface in order to talk to the computer system. Because you know that the major hurdle is peripheral devices uses ASCII format. And the CPU doesn't use ASCII format, rather it is going to use some binary format such as gray code or BCD or whatever you call it. So initially, we should be able to translate this ASCII format into the data formats that are supported by the computer system. For that, we do require an interface which translates ASCII code into the binary formats. And is this the only requirement? Rather, is this the only thing that we need from an interface? Is this the only reason why we are using an interface? No. We do need to have an interface for several reasons. The first reason is data formats are different. In order to convert a data format from one to another, we do require an interface. This interfaces uses code converters. Of course, uh, about these code converters, you can now uh, understand in your digital logic design topic. Code converters are the converters which converts from one code to another respective code. Now. The interface is going to convert the code from one respective code to another respective code. But this is not the only reason we use interface. There are several other reasons embedded to using interfaces. Another reason is the type in which CPU differs from the peripheral devices. CPU is essentially is an electronic device, needless to say. But the peripheral devices are not electronic devices. All the peripheral devices are either electromagnetic devices or electromechanical devices, but not electronic devices. So the signals that are going to be released and received by these devices are different from each other. CPU just releases, transmits and receives only electronic signals. But the peripheral devices are going to deal with either electromechanical signals or electromagnetic signals. When it comes to a tape drive, rather a CD drive, it is just an electromechanical device. When it comes to the tape drive, it is an electromagnetic device. The signal reception and transmission is purely based on either electromechanical um, signals or electromagnetic signals or pulses. So we need to convert one signal to another signal. An electronic signal must be converted to electromechanical signal when the CPU is communicating with the CD drive. Similarly, when the CD drive is communicating with the, with the CPU, Electromechanical uh, signal should be converted into electronic signal. The signal conversion will also be done within the interface. The interface is capable of making this conversion, having this conversion happen. So initially, we need the data formats to be converted from one format to another. Second one is, as the type is different from each other, as uh, you know, each of the CPU and the peripheral devices are different in type, we should be able to convert the signals that are going to be generated by each of these devices. And finally, an important thing that we need to discuss that is the clock mechanism. CPU is going to utilize one clock. You know that the control unit is going to be provided with a clock and it uses that specific clock pulse. In addition to which, all the peripheral devices also uses its own clock. Now here the problem is, unless we use a common clock for both CPU and the peripheral devices, Data transfer cannot happen. All the transfer should be under only the common clock pulse. But CPU uses a different clock and the peripheral uses different clocks. Common clock pulse is not possible. This is called synchronization. We should be able to synchronize the clock of the CPU to the clock of the peripheral devices. After which, we'll be able to make this data transfer happen. The third one is called synchronization. For all these reasons, we do require an interface. Initially, we do require an interface to convert the data. Secondly, 
we do require an interface to to convert the signals and finally we do require the interface more importantly for synchronizing the devices that is cpu must be synchronized with the clock of the peripheral device after which both clocks will get synchronized and they will release a common clock pulse then the data transfer might be possible if the clocks are not synchronized data transfer can never be possible this is the difference between cpu and the peripheral devices there are many differences in order to overcome all these differences and establish a communication medium we do require an interface i hope you got it then in the next session we will see how the interface is going to be designed